Hey guys, so this is what if, well, Shazam was an Invincible Part 4, now, no, Part 5, now guys, basically, I hope you guys enjoy this what if, hope you guys like, subscribe, and I'm gonna just dive on in it, dive on into this what if, before I dive in, I just wanna say, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna grind a lot more on my YouTube channel now, because like, I, I'm, I'm serious, I'm going to grind on my YouTube channel. But, yeah. After this, what if I will be, by the time at the end of Christmas break, or by the time before Christmas or after, I'm going to be uploading that stop motion I've been working on for, like, a couple months. Cause mainly, it's just about voice actors. And voice actors aren't really signing up. Well, not really signing up, because, like, all you got to do is just, well, all you got to do is get your Instagram, send some voice messages of like you reading the lines you'll be in the what if and blah 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 i mean you'll be in the stop motion blah blah blah, blah. but yeah a lot of, not a lot of people want to do it i understand why but yeah but i really hope you guys enjoy the video and let's just dive right into it so guys let's begin so we start our story off after episode um five and four basically what we see mark is still injured mm as badly but not as badly but still has to go and you know care and have to go to the medical now pretty much uh billy is badly hurt but not as much as mark or is hurt but not as much as mark and yeah he does give well battle cat a run for his money for a quick second but you know battle cat does slightly defeat well mark or not really defeat billy but he gets away from billy but basically after episode pretty much, well, uh, five, we continue our story with episode six and seven. Basically, part, um, part six to this what if is going to basically be, well, the final and climax of this show. How everything's going to play out and how this show is going to be climaxing into, well, well, Jazam and Mark's fight against their father. Let's just get into it, guys. We start our story off at a college where we see three girls basically meet up with a kid. Well, the, you know, well, the classic, you know, um, well, stereotypical, well, college bully or college, you know, well, Chad, if you'd say. Basically, we see how he talks to the girls all, you know, cocky and stuff. But after that, he gets trapped or gets caught by some sort of man in a, some sort of glove suit. Some sort of man, with a, some sort of man. They, they pretty much clone him. They, oh, they tie him. They, the man ties him down. Sorry, I can't talk right now. The man ties him down, and basically they still have to chat him, saying, "Why am I here?" And pretty much him seeing all the failed experience, experiments around him, seeing halfway built humans and destroy people. And as he's trying to get out of his shackles, he looks at his hand and see that it's, it's well mechanical. And that it's freaking him out. And the man says, you know, he doesn't like how he's talking. So he literally cuts out the Chad's literal vocal cords without killing him. Don't understand how, but yeah. But let's st we can switch to the Invincible logo. And we see that it's getting way more bloodier just for perspective reasons. And after that, we basically see pretty much everybody that was hurt in the whole entire Battle Cat and, you know, situation was you know taken to well a doctor area or pretty much taken to the hospital secret superhero hospital to basically take care of them as fast as possible because like they are really just because monster girl's having some sort of seizure or something and basically we see that monster girl is having some sort of type of seizure and as the you know well, doctors are trying to help her she transforms out of nowhere transforming into her monster self just you know well us at our perspective, seeing that she's dying or something. They try to help her, and basically it goes down south. But Rowat steps in to say that she doesn't need normal medical attention. She needs other things. Basically, as we get switched to everybody else, tending to everybody else's wounds, and, you know, just, well, their things, we basically see that they're tending to Black Samson, Mark, and everybody else. Basically... Billy being halfway hurt, but not as hurt as Mark. As we see Billy, Debbie, 
and Nolson near Mark's, you know, medical bed, and he's all beaten up and bruised. He's better now. He's healed. And we basically see that Billy is there as well, alongside Debbie and Nolan. Nolan pretty much, well, tells, what was it? Tells Billy, uh, or tells Billy he's okay before that you know Mark wakes up. Basically, we see that Mark Billy does have a little bit of suspicions towards his father, like a lot of suspicions towards his father, because he swore that he saw his father outside of the building before Mark was you know halfway or almost murdered. And basically, us uh, seeing that Billy has his suspicions towards his father and is feeling like since him and his father has finally has finally you know. Bonded over these past couple days since Mark got his powers and, and he got his powers, it's been you know nice. But now I, he doesn't know if he should, you know, well look deeper into this and well accuse his father because he doesn't want to lose this relationship with his father because it's the first time in years that he actually felt a real, real part of the well family, or a real part of Nolan in Mark's life. Basically, because Mark and Nolan, Mark. Um, Mark and Gar Billy were very good kid, were like best friends, like they're brothers, they're adopted brothers. But basically, we see that. Well, we see pretty much after that, Eve jumps in to basically say or check up on well Mark. Mark asks about well Amber, and basically we see we have shown that Mark was out for days. And basically, it gets switched to Cecil talking to Cecil Sedman talking to Nolan. And they have the same outcome of the situation. I could switch back to pretty much Mark talking to Amber. Amber, uh, Mark tells Amber, you know, got hit by a truck or not. What was it? Eve told Amber that he was hit by a bus. And basically after that, we see that Amber has the same conversation with Mark. And eventually, Mark, you know, is kind of well shut down by this. Doesn't really know what to say. Because their relationship, their relationship is kind of going down south. Because, well, everything's going weird. Now, but their relationship isn't completely gone. Because, you know, they still had that funny moment about the phone call or whatever. And they still are in the relationship. And, yeah, yada yada. Basically, their relationship isn't going down like, you know, in episode 7 or 8. Basically, we get switched back to Mark, his best friend, and Billy, or his brother. Basically, them walking down the hallway and Mark talking about, well... His situation and them talking about everything that's going on. Basically, as this is going on, you get switched to pretty much Mark going to is in his room. We see Eve will drop by, basically talking to him. After school, after you know, William says everything about you know his crush up upstate because William's you know, okay. Basically, we see that William. And William, Mark, and Billy are actually going there because Billy, you know, wants to go with Mark because, like, they're brothers. They literally nearly share everything. Not share everything, but they're nearly, like, you know, like, they're straight-up best friends. Like, they're brothers. Like, they were raised together. So, basically, we see that Mark and pretty much Mark and Billy just, you know, are being packed up. Billy being packed, packing, packing up in his room. As he's done packing up, he... Knocks on the door of Mark, and Mark tells him, you know, give me a few more minutes. And Billy, you know, just goes downstairs to eat something. Basically running into Debbie. Now, basically, or his mom. Basically, we see that, you know, Debbie and, you know, pretty much Debbie and Billy are sharing some jokes. You know, just being, like, mother and son type of thing. But basically, after that, we basically get switched back to pretty much Mark talking to Eve. And Eve tells him, Amber talks about how... You know, when she was at the community service with Amber, that something clicked for me. That I could just be saving people or helping people more than just being a hero. I could help the environment. Basically, you know, having the same speech as an original. And pretty much, she tells Mark this. And Mark is, well, saying that you should do it. And basically, after that, we see that Mark gets ready to go and Eve leaves. As we see, Billy, Billy and Mark walk into well, the car with... Well, oh, Mark into the car with William. They get ready, and pretty much Amber, William, Billy, and Mark go on. Basically, Omni Man is kind of you know just shocked because he wanted Billy to stay, you know, just training and whatever. 
But, you know, he knew that Billy wasn't going to just let his brother go on, go on, you know, a whole, like, trip by himself. And basically, as we see, Mark and Billy, you know, get kind of teased by William and Amber. Basically, we see that, and while well, Mark just puts on, no, Billy just puts on some headphones and just tunes out everybody on the wall. You know, the drive or the way home. The way to the college. Basically, as we get switched back to Debbie, Debbie goes on, you know, some digging and says, I gotta go somewhere. And, you know, they talk the same way. And we get shown a little bit of tension. But after that, we see that pretty much Nolan finds something out about his outfit. The outfit that was beaten up and bruised and bloodied up when he, you know, killed the Guardians of the Globe. He basically, well checks up on it and sees that it's been tampered with and basically wants to check it he sees that it's been tampered with and it's just not his stuff and he well he knows debbie took it now basically we get switched back to well you know, the crew getting to the college and you know getting there as we see billy take off his headphones and pretty much well william says you were tuned out the whole ride but Billy. Basically, Billy says, yeah. And basically, after that, William just gets out and, you know, introduces him to his crush. And basically, after that, he introduces himself to them and basically helps them out with their bags. And basically, Billy only help, helps out with his own bags because, you know, well, Billy just doesn't want somebody to hold his bags. But basically, we see that William still does, well, let's just say, hit on his crush. But basically, we see that Billy just says, you know, let's just stop it. Let's just get this over with. Because, you know, he just doesn't want to be here for long. Or he, he wants to be here, but he just doesn't want to, well, do all this. Because Billy is still thinking and processing everything. Because he knows that Nolan was there. Nolan was there when, well... Bill, <laughs> Nolan was there when Mark got his literal guts just hit out of his body basically you know billy not knowing if she should tell well mark or should you know accuse his father or act on it but he's just you know thinking about everything after that we get switched back to pretty much eve and her situation of her moving out the house and eve's father tries to stop her stop her but eve doesn't really care because you know last episode or last last episode East father almost called his daughter a B word. You know, I did not like, bro. East father is kind of a straight up jerk, just like a straight up jerk. And so I, I just gotta say, Eve did the right thing, just leave her parents. Basically, as Eve moves out and you know just leaves his parents, we see that William's crush basically introduces them to pretty much. Oh, Rick introduces them to pretty much well the school campus. As they walk around the school campus. We get shown some sort in our perspective. We get shown basically, well, we get shown basically, well, oh, was it the school? We get shown that on the school poster where they put most of all their posters and advertisements or whatever. We see that as a missing, Mister missing poster for the kid we saw well kidnapped at the beginning of the episode. After that, we get switched back to a class at the college where we see a t professor talking about, well, hearts and health and how human evolution and humans can get better. Basically, one of the kids there that kind of gives off some Logie vibes, basically one of the students there, aka I think his name, no, I, I can't remember his name, but basically, well, just a kid that kind of gives off some Loki type vibes, basically talks about how humanity... It's becoming weaker, and that we need to modify ourselves, blah, 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 him giving the same speech. It talks about true potential of humanity, and Amber steps in saying that they're mad much, and basically, basically after, you know, Amber does speak up back to, you know, Claire, or St. Claire, I don't remember his name, St. Claire pretty much talks to, well, what was it, Rick, saying to get out of my way, and, you know, just let it go. Basically, and Billy not really knowing what to do. Now, basically, Billy just... Tells him, you know, just go, bro. It was basically him just, you know, telling him just leave. After that, we see that St. Clair leaves after, you know, Amber and him had a little bit of tension or, you know, something was about to go down. St. Clair still talks about everything and pretty much 
says, you know, well, talks about, well, compliments Rick about his physique. Basically, that's getting shown something sinister underneath that. Basically, any person that knows about surveillance or knows about, you know, suspicion, basically we see that, well, St. Clair is probably most likely, well, analyzing Rick to see if he's a good fit for his experiments, if you could say so. And basically, if you've seen episode um, seven, if you've seen episode six, you know what I'm talking about. And basically, after pretty much the rest of the class or the you know professor tells St. Clair enough and they just sit down, St. Clair just leaves the class. After that, we get to look back to E flying around the forest and her finding one tree, a clear tree area. Basically, her using her powers to pretty much modify and turn it into kind of a big type of, well, tree house type of house just big like tree cabin basically her living there basically after that we get switched to pretty much mark and amber talking and walking around the school premises or pretty much the college and we get switched to pretty much billy william and rick you know walking around basically as billy is walking around we see that billy gets a phone call from pretty much shrink ray because uh, last time i said last you know pretty much i think last part it was something about, you know, Shrink Ray and him were, you know, a thing or being a thing. And basically, as you get your phone, a phone call from, you know, Shrink Ray, pretty much Billy tells Shrink Ray, you know, I'm out on a trip with my brother. Basically, him talking to her. And over the phone, they start to flirt. And basically, we see after that, we get switched back to pretty much Mark and, what was it? After we get shown a little bit of a montage with pretty much, um, after, you know, he talks to Shrink Ray, blah, blah, blah. Basically, you know, they, you know, flare or whatever. Their relationship is stable. Basically, it gets switched back to pretty much Mark and Amber having a little bit of a montage together of sharing, you know, well, the day together at the college. Basically, going on all the, you know, sites there, the waterfalls, watching the lessons on the campus. And basically, just ma being boyfriend and girlfriend, just making the relationship better, and just them all around, just their relationship getting way better than it was before, because, Mark, because you know, Amber was kind of doubtful, and Mark and how he was always gone or whatever, but they're spending time together, like, real time, and basically, their relationship is becoming, well, really good, better than before. Basically, as they're talk, as they're going around the sites, you know, spending time together, basically, you know, just having fun, Basically, we see that, you know, after that, after they, you know, have a have half a really good day at the school campus, getting some, you know, fries and whatever, and Mark getting some, you know, school merch. Basically, right when they're about to kiss, we get shown pretty much William and Rick's, you know, say hi to them, walking towards them near the bench. But after that, we see some sort of commotion happen and a explosion happens. Us seeing some sort of android, robot modified creature comes out of a hole that was blown up in the school campus. I've seen that it's some sort of robotic monster of things. Basically, it's, you know, completely just, you know, shocked. Basically, the android tries to attack people, it being shown not to be able to speak. As it yells out in pain, trying to take out everybody, we see that it tries to attack pretty much a woman. Basically, as it starts to attack people, we see... Uh, it's shown that it has incredible strength at pushing a whole truck like it was nothing. As Billy and Mark see this, Mark goes for, tries to fight an android, but he sees that he can't really fight it because, you know, he's a hero. He can't really just do whatever. Basically, after we see pretty much, um, well, the android guy, basically the android guy, you know, tries to grab Rick and attack him. After that happens, the android guy just throws Rick like a rag doll. And pretty much we get switched back to the android grabbing William because William tried to stop the android from killing Rick. Basically, android choking out, well, pretty much choking out uh, William. We get to get switched to pretty much Billy. Uh, Mark is, you know, still saving, helping people. But basically, we see that Mark and Billy just ditched. Basically, a scene lightning bolt in the, um, a scene a lightning, lightning strike in the distance. And a scene that Billy and Mark showed up to the scene. As Shazam and Invincible. As we see the fight, you know, progress, basically before the android can kill William, pretty much Mark steps in, punching or grabbing the the android's fist. 
and basically tries to go up against him, a scene that the strength was actually kind of a tension. Before the android gets upper hand on Mark, or was about to, basically we see pretty much, well, Jazam jumps in before, I mean, Jazam jumps in, but right, not as in time for, you know, pretty much, we only get a good look at Mark's mask, basically him recognizing it was Mark behind the mask. As Mark is fighting the android, or the robot, basically, or the cyborg, I guess, basically it's hard to fight back by back, and as the robot was painting his water, painting, well, Mark's face in the water, just trying to drown him, we see that, well, Billy, ju Billy jumps in, or just Sam jumps in, pretty much uppercutting the android in the ch in the sky. Mark jumps in, throwing it right back down to the ground, and it makes a huge crater. Basically, we see that android gets back up, then being confused on why it's not just gone, and the android grabs Mark and throws him down to the ground, because Mark is kind of weakened. The android starts to beat down Mark, but the android's fist is grabbed or pretty much stopped by Billy, and Billy electrocutes the android, and pretty much the android's fist gets pushed back. The android gets pushed back, and the android's face faceplate gets, well, pretty much gets ripped off of his face. As it runs towards Billy and Mark, it runs towards them, and basically we see that, well, they get, they get into a fighting position, and the android is like cyborg is terrified of what he sees he looks into the water or the well see the um what was it sorry the oh the reflection of the water and he sees himself as a monster his face is destroyed his nose is cut off he's just you know he, he's a monster he's been turned into something he never wanted to be basically him freaking out and being terrified at what has happened to him and as he looks at Mark, he basically goes out in rage, being completely just terrified, and he runs towards Mark, but he, but he runs towards the spear thing towards Mark, killing himself. Basically, Billy and Mark being in, in complete confusion on what just happened. Basically, Billy would have looked at, well, the what was it, the android's face, and basically would have been completely shocked at this. As Billy as pretty much Mark runs towards William, William says, you know, you're a hero this whole time. That explains so much stuff. What about Shazam? Basically, Mark says, it's Billy, but I'll talk to you later. Basically, him flying off into the sky and I've seen that William basically, you know, is talking to them about something went down or whatever. And basically, after that, we see Shazam also follow after Mark and fly, pat and fly behind him. Basically, as they dip. Now, William does get a little bit closer to Rick because of the whole entire situation. And pretty much Amber, you know, is kind of angry at Mark. When Mark comes back, you know, just in his civilian clothes, after he gets dressed out of his hero costume after Billy is also right behind him. As pretty much M Amber t scolds, well, Mark and Billy saying, you know, why did you just leave? You just left us. Basically him saying, her saying, you just left. You just, you know, ditched us. And like, we could have done. But pretty much him saying, her saying that he's a coward and all other stuff. Basically, as Amber basically goes off on him, Billy tries to stop it, but Amber says, like, stay out of it, Billy. Billy is confused, um, or he doesn't really understand, and just says that this is just horrible. After this, we see that the man behind it, or pretty much we get shown that, well, well, um, the kid from the uh, professor's room was the man that, you know, got the Chad you know, experimented on him, and all sorts of other stuff. You see, as that happens, basically gets twisted pretty much well. Billy sees this, but he just, oh, she scoffs it, just saying that it's some sort of fanboy or some sort of weirdo that just grabs the mask. Basically, he walks off right after Mark, and basically gets stopped by William, saying that William, you know, just let it go. Basically, Mark is completely, and, like, Billy is, like, you know, he does understand that, you know, Amber doesn't know his identity and all other stuff. But, let's just get off with the story. Um, Amber's a little, I mean, like, she's she's just a, oh my god, bro, I hate her, bro. Because she, why would she get angry at Mark when she know Mark is a hero and is invincible? Like, why would she be angry at him? I, I understand that like, you want to know the truth, but she's only been dating for a couple months. Or maybe a couple weeks. I don't know. But it was way, like, bro, you, I would at least wait, like, a year before I tell somebody I'm a superhero. Like, bro. 
Like, Amber's a good girl. Yeah, whatever. But I don't think I can trust her with literally my secret identity. Like, a girl I just met a couple months ago. But, yeah. Maybe even a week. I don't even know they've even been... Da- I don't even know they've been dating for a month. But basically... Basically get switched back after, you know, the whole situation. We get switched back to the hospital where we see Robot, his robot's body is, like, destroyed. Him getting there with some sort of rope, with some sort of rose or flower, some sort of mythical flower. And basically another another robot copy, or another robot body, basically comes through the wa- comes through the door and grabs the, you know, pretty much, what was it? Grabs the thing from robots, from the damaged robot's body. And that damage robot, you know, well, just dies. Basically, I've seen another robot basically having the flower and him giving it to the doctors to cure Monster Girl. As we switch back to Black Samson, Black Samson is, you know, better and all, but we also get to show that Black Samson's powers are back as well. After that, we get to switch back to pretty much, oh, Debbie talking about the suit and everything with the man that made the suit for Mark and made the little, the cape for, um, what was it, Billy? Basically, we see that he also made um, Nolan's suit, and he checks on the DNA on Nolan's suit and sees that it's DNA from the, the from the Guardians of the Globe, their last, well, strands of the DNA before they were getting murdered. Like, Red Rush's punches, pretty much, Red Rush's punches, water droplets, high-pressure water, scratches, hits, you know, speed splits, basically just damages and we will pretty much damage and attacks from the Guardians of the Globe. Basically, man, or pretty much Art, or uh, Art, I think that's his name. Yeah, he went by the name Art, A-R-T. Basically, he says that Nolan killed the Guardians of the Globe. And basically, she's kind of shot, not really knowing, like, if she could believe this or not. But Art tells her, tells her that this is true. After that, it gets switched to pretty much him saying that you need to get out of here now. Saying that, you know, you're, you know, he, he killed him. And basically, after Art, you know, turns off the machine or the analyzer on the suit, basically, he looks at the marks on the gloves and sees that it's blood. And that Nolan killed the guys of the globe. And that's for sure. That's for sure. He, he killed them. And after that, you see how Debbie confused and doesn't want to believe it, but she has to. From afar, we see, we see Nolan over here and we're just looking out of, well, art store or shop, basically being filled with the, well, the shot. After we get, after we get searched up to the crew getting back to the college and pretty much Amber locking herself in her room in the college dorm they're leaving in, we see that they, you know, camp out outside of the room. Basically, a scene that, well, I, I just don't like Amber, bro. Why is she Why is she angry at Mark when she knows Mark's a hero, bro? I don't understand. She's just a, oh my god, bro. I mean, like, sheesh, dude. But after we see, you know, Rick walk off, we see that William tries to talk to Billy and Mark about the whole entire superhero thing after, you know, Amber and Rick are out of the way. He says that you guys are so cool, bro. And him saying I'm a huge fan of Shazam. Basically, him saying he's more of a fan of Shazam than Mark. But basically, Mark and Billy, or Billy, you know, says, yeah, thank you, I guess. And basically, we get switched back to pretty much Mark, and Mark, you know, doesn't really want to talk. He just, he's just focused on his relationship with Amber and the shot. Basically, we get switched back to Eve, and Eve pretty much, well, uh, what was it? <laughs> Eve basically just uses her powers to help the environment, like stopping forest fires and Regrowing the plants that are burning the forest fires, her stopping avalanches or, you know, landslides, her also regrowing crops in, you know, starving areas with farmers are where farmers can't really grow anything and just saving the environment. As we get switched back to pretty much robot, a robot does give that information. A robot does so have the whole entire android or his clone is being made basically, you know, them asking for the money or whatever or the or the stuff they need. Basically, after Robot talks to them and sorts out the whole entire situation, we get switched back to pretty much William, Mark, and Billy 
William talking to them, talking about superhero thing or whatever, and pretty much William asked, you know, Mark, can you fly me around? Basically, Mark uses super speed and his f- powers, you know, just grab William and flies him around for a little bit. And William says, that's awesome, gotta do it again. Billy says, I'll take you. Him saying Shazam and a lightning bolt going off. The lights go flicker a little bit, but he flies off. And basically, after he flies off, you pretty much see he flies off, basically flying him all up into the sky, all around at full speed. Lightning and lights going off. Basically, William saying this is so cool. Basically, him getting flied right back into the house. Before that, Mark did say there's Shazam outside of the building, so they fell through the window onto the couch. So basically, after that, we get to talk to Amber, and Amber does get, you know, kind of, she does get talked to by, you know, a guy that's trying to sell flyers or whatever. As we can switch back to pretty much Mark is asleep, and Billy is, like, laid out. We basically see, well, you know, William and Rick are talking, but pretty much R- R- William is confused on why the phone connection went out or whatever. Basically, Mark is still, you know, up in his feelings, but we see that pretty much... Well, William tries to tell them about the whole situation, about how, you know, Rick went missing or whatever. Basically, Mark not really caring, and him not being as heroic, and him just being a kind of a jerk at this moment. And basically, as we get switched after that, we get switched that Billy actually, you know, wants to help. Because Billy doesn't, Billy does have stuff on his mind, like, you know, Omni-Man, and why he didn't save, or why he didn't help Mark. But after we see Mark walk off, we see that William is distraught. Basically, Billy... You know, offers to help William, and basically after that, after the offer is up, basically, well, Billy goes on the last known location of Rick and starts to track down what happened. As he looks around, he does get, you know, he does get distracted, and kind of goes to, let's just say, a pizza place because he's hungry. As he's, you know, wasting time just eating pizza, we get switched back to pretty much the hospital, where we see pretty much Black Samson and a robot, you know, just looking over Monster Girl, so now she's kind of, you know, she's still injured, but basically, you know, Black Samson does say that, you know, he got his powers back or whatever, and he's better, like, he's way better now. Basically, after that, we get to switch back to Monster Girl waking up and her being in good condition, and we get to switch back to Art and Nolan talking. Nolan brings some beers, you know, and talks to him, him not trying to kill Art right away, or not trying to kill him at all, because he's still friends with him. But as we get to switch back to the party, we see that Amber... Is you know, just shot about the whole type of situation. But as we see, pretty much, uh, as we see, pretty much, what was it? Billy in the pizza place across where, well, pretty much, what was it? Across where, well, Rick was taken. Pretty much, William goes after just looking for himself, and basically, you know, finds a, you know, Mark fi- finds Billy across the street in the pizza place and tells him, "What are you doing?" Basically, he says, I found something, and pretty much Mark says, okay, or Billy says, okay, and follows right after, or follows right behind, pretty much, what is it, William. As William and Billy start to look around, basically, we see that they start to walk around, just investigating and whatever, and whatnot. As they're walking around, trying to figure out what's going on, as that happens, we see some sort of red light in the sewers right after they pass by a tunnel. After that, we get switched back to pretty much Mark going to the party where Amber went to. And basically, after that, before that, we get switched back to Art and Nolan talking about, well, guy things. And also talking about the future, the past, and everything. Basically, Art being kind of, you know, caught up. Kind of unsettled because he knows that what he knows what Nolan did. But, basically, this whole scene, originally, I thought Mark, I thought Nolan was just going to kill him. But yeah, but basically we get switched back to pretty much Amber flirting with one guy, not really flirting with him, but just talking to him. And basically as it's happening, we pretty much see, well, Mark sees this and sees the wrong, and gets the wrong, pretty much, what was it, the wrong thing. And basically as he's called by William, William tells him something went down, and pretty much Billy says, I'm there too. Basically Mark is... Mark loves his brother, so he immediately rushes to his brother's side, not really even caring for Amber, because, like, he loves his brother and William, and they're both in danger. As pretty much Billy is getting dragged by the robot, Billy is, you know, getting drowned under the water, so, or in the sewage water, so, and he's being dragged by his foot, so he can't really say anything, because he's getting, his voice is getting mumbled by the water. As this is happening, we get switched back to pretty much 
pretty much what was it? Billy getting pit on the board before you know William, and William is on the ground just tied up. As we see, pretty much, well, Mark j jumps in trying to save the day. He is going to the sewer trying to figure out what happened to William. As that's happening, we see that pretty much, well, the other guy sit, sends his you know wacky to his robots to pretty much go up against, pretty much well, what's it? Goes up against well, invincible. Basically, as the robots were just jumping, Mark, we see before that. Before the robots can actually do anything, we see that pretty much because you know, well, Mark Billy did lose consciousness. He wakes up right when Mark was getting his ass handled to him, his booty handled to him. Basically, him just getting jumped. We get switched back to pretty much well, a scene scene. Well, for before one of those robots were Rick. Rick was changed. He was a android. I mean, not android. He is a cyborg now. Pretty much. As this happens, we basically see that, well, Billy sees this alongside William also seeing this. And William is a shot. And pretty much, Billy did actually like Rick. He was a good friend. And he did have some moments with Rick. He was good. He was a good bro. He was a good guy. And basically, she says Shazam, and a lightning bolt strikes off. And basically, he punches. I mean, he punches. He sends this man, the, the scientist or DNA scholar, to the literal gulag. I mean, he punches this man so hard, his jaw flies off of his face. And, and amazingly, he doesn't die. Like, instead of his jaw, like, you know, halfway like, getting punched off of, his whole jaw gets punched clean off of his face. Like, his jaw is away from his body, across the room. And surprisingly, surprisingly, this man is not dead. So, yeah, so basically, after he's just, his whole skull is like, his whole bottom jaw is punched off? And, like, since the skull wasn't completely, like, damaged, they could still put his bottom jaw back on his body. But, yeah, so basically, his bottom bone part of his jaw was punched off. And he was not cold out, just, just you know, bleeding out from his face or his jaw. And as we see the other robots, they get electrocuted by a huge gust of, well, electric of thunder that, well, pretty much Billy set off. As this happens, pretty much everything's going wrong. Now, basically, as we see, you know, the other guy, the other dude, you know, he's taken out. William doesn't do that whole entire thing about almost, you know, punching the absolute duty water out of the Duny Night Scholar. And the Duny Night Scholar is, you know, out. He's out for the count. As we see, the other androids, you know, pretty much are still, you know, damaged or whatever. Rick is, you know, distraught about this whole entire situation. Because Rick is now an android, like he's destroyed, and basically, pretty much as the scientists show, as the medics show up, they are able to just, you know, just slap the scholar's, you know, bottom jaw right back on, and use a little bit of, you know, DNA, a little bit of, you know, let's just say, high tech alien like what was it, healing, healing tech. We get shown that pretty much well. They are able to put his jaw back on, but you know, he yeah, he still has to put like a neck bracer on because like he he was he was way more injured than he was originally when he was punched in the face or like pimp slapped by Mark. As we get switched back to pretty much William and Cecil and everybody else talking about the whole situation, and then you know tending to the wounds of Rick and the and the cyborgs and what happened to them, we get switched back. Pretty much Cecil and the medics and the their men leaving after pretty much Mark, Billy, and William are left there. Pretty much Mark, ha pretty much Billy not really being not really being well injured as he was in original. Now Billy didn't get injured that much; just got halfway drowned. As we get switched back to pretty much, you know, William is just, is you know grieving over the loss of Rick, and he you know hugs Mark, you know them. Pretty much Mark, you know, tending, like, just being there for the grieving thing with, um, William. We see that Billy says, I gotta go. Basically, him getting a call from his girlfriend, uh, pretty much, uh, Shrink Ray, and he flies off. As we get switched off from there, we basically get switched As we get switched off from there, basically see our boy Adam eat. We see Adam Eve get back to her, you know, house in the, in the, in the, in the, in the um, trees 
basically us seeing our house in the trees, you know, whatever. Basically, we see as that's happening, we pretty much see her, you know, well, be really happy about how she saved, she, you know, saved the world and different many times other than just saving people. She saved the environment. She saved the planet. Of like, you know, saving crops and, you know, doing small things like that. So basically, after that, we get switched to pretty much Nolan and Debbie. And Debbie tells Nolan that I know what you did. Basically, her, you know, being completely just, like, just hating Nolan for what she did. What he did. Nolan tries to tell her, you know, and just stay. But basically, Nolan is is struck with madness and punches a hole through the wall just in rage. As this happens, we see that Nolan is just left there in his own thoughts, just completely just thinking about the whole situation. After that, we get switched to the end of the episode. And my voice is chopped, so I'm finna take like an hour break, but it might just be a second for you guys. Before the episode ends, we see a couple of teenagers basically digging a hole or the grave of the, well, the grave of the, I think, Invincible? Not Invincible, um, um, the Superman of the, um, Guys the Globe. I don't remember his name. Or, I guess, Invincible Man, I think that was his name. Or Immortal Man, or the Immortal. Basically, they are taking up his grave, saying that, you know, and them having that whole time, you know, them having that rumor in their head, saying that, you know, if you drink something from the you know, pretty much skull of the immortal to get his powers. But after that, we get switched to them getting caught, or they're being caught by the Marvel Twins. And the Marvel Twins saying, thank you, kids. And then, you know, gonna, are going to take the immortal's body. But after that, we actually get switched to the end of the episode. And I'm going to leave it off, not here, but I'm going to continue with episode seven guys and this is right when we're getting near the climax of the show because this is when mark and uh, you know mark and billy are about to get a realization on who their father is who their father really is now let's get into it guys as we get switched to episode seven we see debbie wake up after the whole entire argument with mark with nolan and we see her basically walking around the house, seeing the whole, the whole Nolan punch through the wall. And after that, she's, you know, just distraught. She just doesn't know what to do. She knows what Nolan is doing, but she doesn't know what to do. Now, Nolan talks to her. Or he gets shown that they're about to talk, but we get switched off. And there we see Mark, Debbie, Mark, uh... Amber and William driving back to pretty much, what was it, Mark, Billy, Amber, and William driving back to, well, the city or back to their, you know, home. Basically, I guess was to pretty much, you know, Billy is just texting, you know, flirting with his girlfriend, X-Ray. And after that, we basically get switched to pretty much them, again, us, you know, the rest, the rest of the three. Just, you know, having a really, well, empty, very quiet, you know, well, drive. Mark tries to talk about, talk to Amber, but Amber just turns up the, you know, pretty much, it turns up the radio, and pretty much, it gets switched to pretty much William just doesn't like, just, he's a distraught with Mark, and he does, you know, know that Billy did offer to help him, but he got distracted, so he doesn't like Billy or Mark. He, he likes them still, he's, he's friends with them, but just, he has, you know, a bad step with them right now. Now, basically, as we get switched back to Eve and in her house, or her cat, or her, like, tree cabin, she makes, you know, she makes some a coffee for her, or some drink for her, or tea, I guess, or not nah, coffee, she makes some coffee for her, with her powers, and basically, she's just tuckered out from the last, from the, yesterday, and she, you know, stretches, seeing that she does have a little bit of a cramp, because, you know, she was, like, working herself out yesterday, but after she gets ready with her, you know, well, Adam changing abilities, she gets ready, and basically, she is, you know, over on the world, everybody talking about Adam Eve, about how she's saving the environment, and a lot of people are liking her a lot more, because she's just saving the environment, she's not just a hero anymore. She's still a hero, but she, everybody's saying, you know, she's, you know, saving the environment now. But after that, after Eve, you know, just enjoying herself, 
on the sunset, the horizon, where her, you know, forest house is. We get switched back to Nolan and Debbie talk about everything. Nolan tells her about everything about how he had to and everything. As we can switch after that, Nolan leaves and we get switched to Debbie talking or calling Cecil or whatever. After that, we basically get switched to the men there. Basically, a screen showing that the men were always there and cloaked up like Cecil's men. And basically, after that, we get switched back to pretty much Mark in an invincible outfit, just t- uh, you know, s- sh- telling well Amber who he is, and you know he's invincible. And this rock he got her was from Mars and everything. Him telling her, telling her his identity. As she doesn't seem very impressed, we get shown that Amber does know his identity, and Eve told her. Basically, pretty much, Mark says, "So if you knew my identity, why were you angry at me so much time?" We're talking about how you know you never told me about Bob. Basically, them having the same argument. And as this happens, we see that Billy was there outside of the house because they were going to do some vigilante work or do some, you know, superhero work. But as he overhears this, he's just, like, royally just, like, he just is ticked off. He does not like Amber anymore. Because Amber's, and his eyes, and, like, the sound and everything, he just sounds like, it sounds like to him, Amber is just a literal, just a, a jerk. Because Amber, I honestly don't like this. Because Amber knew he was a superhero, but he was still angry at her. He, she was still angry at him for not telling her his identity. But let's be real. You can't really tell somebody you're just dating for a couple months that you're a big time superhero out of nowhere. Like, come on. Like, does she know? Like, bro, I, I honestly don't understand why some people defend Amber. Amber is, I swear, bro, if this was not, if I, if this wasn't, if this was going to be demonetized, I would be cussing out Amber right now because I feel like Amber just sucks as a character. But basically, we get switched back to pretty much Monster Girl being, you know, welcome back into, or giving a welcome party back into the, you know, Guardians of the Globe after her entire recovery. And after that, we get switched to pretty much, you know, them celebrating or whatever or whatnot. And after they celebrate, we get switched to pretty much a warehouse where we get to see the Mortal Twins basically get ready, get get ready with the, well, what was it the shipment or whatever? And basically, as Robot tries to take his clone, pretty much we see that they fight. Basically, as they fight, eventually, Robot's clone is made, and well. Robot's clone is made and he is made. So basically, yeah, so Robot's whole entire arc is done with. And basically, not ar- arc, but Robot's robot arc is done. And his new life has began as, you know, his human body is better. And basically, as you can switch back to William and Mark talking, we see that Billy is just out flying around. And basically, him uh, meeting up with Shrink Ray on the top of the pretty much base of the Guardians of the Globe, and she's just talking to Billy, and Billy and her are sharing moments, and they do share a kiss, and they start to make out, but they eventually stop, and pretty much after the whole situation with Mark talking to William, we get, not after that, we get switched back to Mark, and Mark, William, and everybody else, the same situation, and we get switched back to Mark, base, and we switch back to Nolan, and Cecil knows everything. Nolan is just mind his business, just in the, you know, pretty much in the, uh, what was it, Antarctica, basically him just, you know, wording out his speech to Mark to tell him what's going what's gonna to happen. And as he's speeching or making the speech to Mark to try to tell him and bring him to his side, he also makes a speech to both of them, basically making a speech towards Mark and Billy because he doesn't want to lose both of his sons because he feels like he's became a better father to Billy because he's became better to Billy. But as he makes a speech towards Billy and Mark, he flies off trying to do that. As we see the Mellow Twins basically, you know, pretty much, what was it? The Mellow Twins basically, well, start the clone, cloning process. They start the cloning process and pretty much the clone is made from Rex's DNA. After that, we get switched to pretty much, what was it? After the clone situation, we see that well, Robot, well, takes out the Marvel Twins, pretty much putting them under custody, and they get arrested again. After we get switched on there, we get switched back to Nolan going to his house, 
and he runs in with the well Siegel's men and kills them all and such just brutal the boys away. I mean just throwing them around like rag dolls, just going Superman mode on them. After one sees all this, he try she tries to run away, but she gets stopped and pretty much she's about she like she's just messed up. As she tries to go to the house across the street asking for help, Nolan notes that, you know, this is well, where they hide. He flies up in there and basically tells, you know, Daniel what's going on. As he sees what they're doing, they've been spying on them for years. And basically Nolan is, you know, just a shot, just saying, like, why would you spy on me like that? My family, everything. Basically, as Daniel has to fight back, we see that Daniel says that they're on a working with you, Cecil. Or on a working with you, sir. And he blows up the house that was across from the Grayson home. And basically, Daniel's dead. After that, we see Cecil and the rest of the team, or Cecil and the rest of it, his people, try to say, find out a way to take down, well, what was it? Take down Nolan. As Nolan flies off, we see how he flies off and basically tries to find Mark and Billy. As we get switched back to pretty much a robot, taking down the Marvel twins and fighting them. Basically, we see that, you know, they're fighting them, but as we see, we can switch back to, well, Big Man, the Omni-Man. He pretty much runs into William and asks him where is Mark and Billy. He says, I don't know where Billy is, but Mark might be out with Eve. Basically, as, you know, pretty much Mark's father flies off, Omni-Man pretty much flies off, he tries to find out where Mark is. As he gets switched in, pretty much Robot introduces his clone self or him to the team. Basically, he's confused on why, you know, Robot looks like a kid version of him. And Robot says he uses DNA to clone himself and all the other stuff, blah, 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 the Marvel Twins and everything. And pretty much, you know, pretty much, well, Rex is kind of distraught by this, saying, like, why would you just ask me for my DNA? And basically, as we can switch back to Cecil's man tracking down Eve and Mark and Billy, because Billy did meet up, meet back up with Mark, because after you know he had this, he had the whole talk with, or he you know had a little bit of his moment with his girlfriend. He was you know he meet up back, he met back up with Mark, then flying across the sky with Eve, Mar Eve, Mark, and Billy. Billy was just you know a couple feet away from them after you know Eve and Mark start to talk about everything. Basically, we see pretty much our boy. We see that pretty much Mark is, you know, in his just damn form, obviously, because he was flying he was fly, flying with Mark and Eve. Pretty much Shazam was on his phone, just ignoring Mark and Eve as they were talking on the waterfall. As they were talking, we see that Mark uh, Nolan sees some cameras following him. And tell Cecil that, you know, you're done. Now, basically, as something happens, we see some sort of, well, what was it? Some sort of secret weapon Cecil made. A, pretty much a whole entire, I mean, a whole entire, what was it? Um, what was it? <laughs> Sorry, guys. A whole entire, um, I think, uh, a whole, I, get, I mean, like a whole entire... Like a big giant, I can't remember what it is. Um, I can't remember what it is. Some a machine in the in the sky's atmosphere shoots a huge beam of energy towards towards Nolan and shoots him down like a bug. Basically, Nolan falls down to the ground or gets a huge gets burned into a huge crater, like miles upon miles of just wildlife, ground, everything is just completely obliterated. And after, pretty much, well, everything goes down, and the huge, like, dinosaur, the dinosaur meteor type, you know, green, oh, is it, a crater is made, we see that pretty much Nolan and a bunch of birds in the sky were also killed as well, just seeing, like, it was a bunch of destruction. We see that Nolan is unscathed by this, them being completely distraught. Nolan takes down the you know machine of the atmosphere before it can hit another blast on Nolan and Nolan goes up against the blast basically destroying the machine and him taking it on full blast after the machine is destroyed we pretty much see that Nolan pretty much destroys the machine all Superman style flying through it and basically after that 
we get switched back to the you know pretty much well we get switched back to the to the um what was it the Guardians of the Globe talking about everything but the Guardians of the Globe do get told because something's going on in the atmosphere Omni Man's fighting against Cecil basically after Eve and Mark talk Eve tells Mark everything and they still talk the same way after that. It gets switched off from pretty much Cecil starts to taunt with, well, starts to talk with Nolan. Nolan tries to get Cecil, but Cecil teleports out of his way multiple times, getting out of his clutches just like in seconds. (laughs) Cecil talks to him about, you know, why would you kill him? I know you didn't kill him for just the fun of it. And pretty much, well, great, pretty much Omni Man. Here's what you know pretty much Nolan is saying and Nolan says right, what about your kids basically as Nolan Is getting out of the way of you know pretty much well Nolan trying to ki- as Cecil's getting out of the way of Nolan trying to kill him Basically you see how Nolan tries to kill him multiple times over and over trying to get to him before he can teleport away But he's just too fast from well, Nolan After Nolan's pretty close pretty much they deploy robot zombie Cyborgs, the same tech from episode seven. I mean, the same tech from episode six is deployed onto Nolan. Basically, pretty much, as Nolan takes out the and uh, takes out the cyborgs pretty quickly, and as we see, pretty much the guy that made the cyborgs in episode six is you know back or whatever. Him not being able to talk at all, not even being able to murmur a word. Basically, we see that Nolan takes out the android robots incredibly fast, just destroying them. And basically, as he shows them the carnage of everything, and basically how he just took down their, you know, cyborgs in minutes. We see that the other guy was, like, distraught about this, how Elmy Man just took down his robots like that. But he gets dragged out of the, you know, room, basically, after Cecil says that, you know, I gotta do something. And basically, after we see the normal twins try to figure out something else, or try to bring back the, well, what was it, the immortal? We get super back to Nolan fighting the kaiju that he fought before that gave him an actual hard time and actually gave him a hard time and actually almost beat him. As Nolan fights against the, you know, creature or the kaiju, he tries to fight against them. As it is happening, we see that pretty much, well, the Guardians of the Globe see this. No, Cecil sees this. And Eve is called by, the, is called too. And pretty much at, right before the kaiju was about to eat, well... Nolan, out of nowhere, we see that Mark and Invincible punch the side, punch the side of the, well, Kaiju's face off, or not face off, but punches it down into the ground, and two teeth follows, follow the Kaiju's face instead of one, and basically, out of, out of, out of, <laughs> sorry guys, I can't really talk right now, after that, we see that Eve gets a call by Debbie about everything about Grayson, about, not about, what was it, Nolan, and as Mark, and well, more than Mark and Billy show up, they start to help with well, almost it, their father. As they're fighting against the kaiju, they you know have a little bit of father and father and sons type of thing, and they start to fight against the kaiju. As they're fighting against the kaiju together, they're all three of them are actually getting their butts handed to them. Basically, as they're all getting handed to them, pretty much Mark of uh, about. Mark and the rest of his, you know, Mark, his brother, and Nolan are getting folded by the kaiju. They're, like, about to be killed. Basically, Cecil is told by Debbie to stop it, and, you know, you might kill Mark. And basically, as Mark is almost getting destroyed or killed by the robot, Cecil says it's the only way. We can't stop it now. It's either him or the world. He's in the way now. Basically, see, Debbie is not liking this. And as this is happening, we see that Shazam... And Nolan are keeping up the kaiju's jaws open because they don't want, you know, well, his son to get crushed by t- kaiju teeth. After the, well, immortal was brought back to life or at the, well, immortal twins succeed on that, the immortal flies off trying to go after Omni Man. As they take down the kaiju, all three of them, basically, they, they see this as a really good win. Basically, well, they had the same type of talk and basically, Omni Man tells both of them, I need to talk to you. Basically, after that, you're going to see the Kaiju tries to get back up, but 
pretty much as it tries to get back up, we see that the Immortal jumps in, going up against, well, Nolan, trying to fight him. As he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nolan, trying to fight him, we see that Nolan, well, somewhat just defeats, you know, Invincible the same, and uh, beat, uh, oh, was it, defeats pretty much the Immortal again on live television, Earth King is shown, Omni Man killed the Immortal after he came back to life. Now as the news watches this, as the news sees this, after this happens, after he kills the Immortal, and everybody on the world on the news sees this, everybody, everybody sees this, us uh, seeing that Nolan, Omni Man killed the Immortal, both the two best heroes were murdered, well, one of the best heroes were murdered by one of the other best heroes. And the whole news, Amber, William, the Guardians of the Globe, the new ones, everybody, everybody, I'm telling you, everybody around the world saw this. Like, Omni Man is incriminated now. After Omni Man looks towards D Billy and Mark after he killed, killed, well, and Vince killed the immortal right in front of them, he tells them that I need to talk to you. We need to talk. Both, all, both of you. We need to talk. Basically, after that, we get switched to the end of the episode. The tension is rising. The climax is here. And I'm going to leave it off here, guys. So, part part six will be episode eight. The climax of the show. The big fight scene. Everything we've been waiting for. Pretty much everything. Will be well climaxing at this. And basically, guys... I hope you guys enjoyed part 5. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And guys, if you want part 6 immediately after this what if is uploaded, just say so, guys. Because I'm finna say, bro, I'm finna make episode 8 way more well emotionally drive. Because pretty much, I feel like I've, I feel like I've gotten better with narrating and, you know, narrating emotions with this what if. Basically, guys... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like subscribe. As always, guys, have a blessed day. See you guys later. Bye. Deuces.